Howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 39. Pleased to announce I am drinking wine from a Tupperware container with a straw. That's how ready I am for this. Slow Beef, how about you? <laughs> Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. Alabama. I'm drinking iced tea out of a plastic cup. I came back from my cousin's wedding in Delaware yesterday, so there is that. And speaking of Delaware, we have super great friend with us here today. Yeah, speaking of Delaware, as I am very much related with Delaware. <laughs> How close are you to Delaware right now? Well, probably as far away as Slow Beef is, since we live in the same state. See, completely relatable. Mm-hmm. I had no idea you were in the, my state. Yeah, yeah, I actually work for that state. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. New Jersey has a high demand for Let's Play? Uh, yes, actually, that is what I do for the state. I am a government-sanctioned <laughs> Let's Player. I uh, have strict regulations I have to uh, I have to apply to. By the way, I was drinking premium ginger brew ginger ale. Whoa! From a glass bottle. It's very classy. It's you know, it's a small world though. Um, there's 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 a few New Jersey Let's Players there. We got uh, Vicus. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw him. The yeah. super yep. Uh, Void Burger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyone who starts with the V, really. Yeah, actually, it's a, or an S, apparently. I do seem to remember uh, some sort of poll on something awful some time ago where there was an inordinate amount of people who were from New Jersey. It was kind of surprising. I, yeah, we don't have much in the state sometimes. Well, it depends, really. Yeah, but. we don't have much, so we all sit at home talking over video games? Is that, <laughs> is that why we're doing this? Like New York, but too piss poor to live there? New Jersey. <laughs> It's it's kind of, I wouldn't, you know, though, I, to be fair, I wouldn't really say piss poor as opposed to not either... Normal income? New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. I'm not willing to give 90% of my income to rent, more or less, but, um, <laughs> I laugh, but, you know, I mean, you do get to live in New York, so there is that, but, are you from the, are you from the New York side or the Philadelphia side of Jersey? Um, I'm more towards the north and slightly to the west. So, mm. I mean, it's really more. I I could catch a train, and be in New York within an hour. So, okay, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. I uh, I used to live in Jersey City, so it was like 15 oh, yeah. minutes. Yeah, right across the Hudson River. Diabetes, on the other hand, though, uh, lives in a in a state where you like have your couch on the front porch and stuff. You darn tootin'. You, and you also live by, right by a train, as we just found out. Yes, that's right. I live on a train. Is the couch right by the train tracks? It's what you're watching? It's how you pass the time? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a substitute for television. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you could probably, you should try doing a let's train kind of thing. Mm. You know, just film the train going by, talk over it. It's like. a very on-rails experience. <laughs> you, uh -huh. call, you call that a boxcar? <laughs> Do you ever read the boxcar children? The what? The Boxcar Children. I've never even heard of The Boxcar Children. It was a popular book series when I was a youngin'. Uh, no, nah, I never read it or heard of it. I have not heard of that either. Maybe it didn't have much uh, much penetration in New Jersey, in the Garden State. It's a southern thing. We have we have a very like high uh, intellectual wall for what books make it into the state is the thing. <laughs> it's a Jersey thing. <laughs> we all talk like that, it's true. It is it's true, actually. Yeah, what's wrong with you? We're just putting on a voice for the podcast. Basically, more or less. I actually play up this accent to get more um, subscribers and likes on YouTube. Excuse me, subscribers or likes. It's a, it's a mutually exclusive kind of thing. Every video recording experience is a struggle to talk like this <laughs> and keep my natural accent at bay. <laughs> I have a lot of cues I've learned from like actors and such to keep me in the right character for it, you know? Do you guys say y'all ever? Yeah. I say it all the time. Oh, he thank does you, because it's convenient, right? Yeah. No, it is good. I have, I have other, I have like friends from the south who don't have anything to do with video games, um, who uh, say y'all a lot, and like it is very convenient. Uh, so why don't you acknowledge that the south gives good things every now and then? Because I'm from New Jersey, and I get shit. We get shit on like twenty four seven. More than the south? Right. Honestly, I don't think we have to acknowledge anyone else, considering <laughs> how how what people say about New Jersey. Honestly. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the worst MTV ever did to, like, just laying your state out to dry was Buck Wild, and that was still, like, West Virginia, which is, like, really, really the South. I, I mean, it's, that's, I think North Carolina is really where the South begins, right? It's like the uh, the, when you think of the Deep South, yeah. Yeah, 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 right. West Virginia, I mean, it's pretty weird there, you know, but nobody ever thinks of it, but you think of New well, Jersey. Well, Virginia, you can, like, slice it in half horizontally. The north half, you have kind of your getting to the kind of the DC-ish area. 
right, vicinity, rather. And then the south, you get kind of the south. Right. For those of you just joining us, this is a video game-based podcast somehow. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know either. Welcome back to Red Sea Geography. <laughs> I thought this was a podcast talking about the great states of this nation. We are, well, it is something like... So we've covered Alabama and New Jersey, <laughs> yeah. two of the great states. We did mention West Virginia, so that's three. And Delaware. And, oh, Delaware, that's right. All right. I guess we filled the quota then. In case you weren't Delaware of that before. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. Right. Whoa, that's why he's on the podcast. That's what we're here for. And he was worried. <laughs> what? We have something. We were, do- we're doing things a bit different this time around because with, with, we've been bringing more guests on lately. More celebrity guests, you know. And, and as, as you most certainly are, uh, Mr. Great Friend. Yes, the great's right in the name. Right, yeah, absolutely. Do you have, is it, do you have the D or did you lose the D in Friend? Uh, well, it, basically most, most, uh, services that you sign up to, like Twitter, uh, has a 15 character limit. Oh. And it turns out that, um, I guess I wasn't thinking when I came up with the name originally, it has 16 characters. Mm-hmm. So I have to drop one pretty much every time I sign up for something. Cause it kind of reads like you think you're a really great friend, but lose confidence in it as you're saying it. <laughs> I'm a super great friend. I, I rarely ever actually say the name. I mean, pretty much I came up with it when I first signed up to something awful, like, five years ago, Mm -hmm. and I spent all two seconds thinking of the name. If I knew it was going to use it for this long, I probably would have put more thought into it. I understand. Well, now you have a convenient three-letter acronym. Mm Mm-hmm. That's true. So goof. Uh, That's true. I mean, but you know, the thing is that, uh, I mean, Diabetes actually wouldn't be a bad username if not for the meme, which I don't really blame you for. I came up with that username before I was aware of the meme, FYI. Before Wilford, right, I gotcha. But I don't think anyone would believe the actual origin story of that name, which I've gone over before on various Ask Me a Question sites. Well, it's funny because, like, somebody had once sent me a Google Trends thing with, like, Red Supre, Slow Beef, and Diabetes. And I felt really bad because Diabetes was, like, shooting the fuck up. And then I'm like, oh, the meme. Nobody cares about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but, uh, did we ever, we ever do name chat, by the way? Name chat? Yeah, like, where we got, why we chose the names we did. No, uh, we're almost 40 episodes in now. Okay. Do you have a, do you have any, any good story as that to- That means we can recycle content. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, in that case. Hey, we're going to PAX! <laughs> Are, have, have you gone to any video con- game conventions ever? No, I've never really been a convention goer. I mean, like years ago, there was one I went to, uh, Ubercon, but that wasn't really strictly video games. But I've never really, uh, been to any conventions like PAX or, like, you know, the big ones like E3 or anything like that. Right. I've never, I, I had never gone before PAX, uh, honestly. I've been to conventions, like, for business and shit like that, mm-hmm. but, yeah, nothing, like, just for fun. Apple Con. Apple Con. Maybe it's a good thing, because whenever I read people on Twitter talking about PAX, it always starts off with people talking about how great it is, and everyone gets real angry. <laughs> <laughs> it happens it's, every time. Yeah, no. Lines! <laughs> well, there's, um, it's, it's fun, and it's, it's, uh, you can kind of, like, Drop the pretension and be like, all right, I, I can just unabashedly like video games and not worry about things for like a weekend. I know? think it's at its best when you just use it as a way to hang out with people. Yeah, more or mm-hmm. less. Like, I mean, the panels are kind of, mm, some of them are like kind of neat, but most of them are just like, hey, you know, I could be playing. I could be like trying out a cool game or whatever with sure. my friends, you know, that kind of deal. Um yeah, but uh, I think tickets sold out. Well, the three day pass is sold out in like an hour this year or something ridiculous. But I don't know. But I've become aware now of all these other. There's like Magfest in. Uh, I think that's in what January. Yeah, first of the year. Uh, in yeah, first of the year in um Maryland. Uh, which we got invited to by like the Navigator people. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Yeah, was it a uh, music and games? Is that what that stands for? Yep, yep, music and games festival. Metabot. Uh, I don't know if you know him from SA. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he actually uh, recommended that to me a while back. Okay. Apparently, uh, that's a little more just like a, I won't say like a party scene per se, but that there's like a lot more drinking and a lot more just like fuck around. Like a concert shit. venue. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, more or less. It's not the deadly serious game that PAX is. <laughs> <laughs> deadly serious, exactly. <laughs> and then um, there's RTX. Yep, yeah, Rooster Teeth. I didn't know how to convention. Hmm. Is that new? Do you know or? I think it's been going on for a while. Okay. That's cool. Um, That's over in Austin. Yeah, I've never been to Austin. I've never I've never been to Texas actually. You've never left New Jersey. 
No, I haven't. No, I know. I, I just mentioned at the beginning of this, I clearly did. They don't let us leave New Jersey. That should be clarified. <laughs> it's like Papers, Please, more or less. Hey, speaking of which, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Papers, Please, and I really like it a lot. Would you describe it as fun? Uh, you know, I don't know why, but I really... You haven't played it yet, have you? I have. Oh. I talked about it many podcasts ago. Oh, okay. Well, I'm May not have been on it, though. I don't forget. I have yet to play it with the nudity option, because I'm always playing it in public, and also I have a chronic masturbation problem. But um, but you do play it while you're nude, right? That's, oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Friend, you're, you've, you're a fan of this game, right? Yeah, I've uh, played some of it. I've gotten a couple of the endings. Uh, has, have you either of you gotten any of the endings? Because there's I've, a bunch. I'm at about like the halfway point. I got one of the endings, and I did watch a couple on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I'm right now. I'm like trying to like just. I've been setting goals for myself. Like I'm trying to get past like cer- certain amounts of money and things like that. Sure. Uh, like I figured, I think I figured out the the best way to streamline day one, which I know is like by far and away the easiest day. Mm-hmm. But like I'm trying to figure out like how to like streamline everything and just make the most cash. I usually am not too worried about that. I'm more trying to figure out whose side I want to take. Generally, I've I've been a very loyal uh, border guard mm-hmm. and just turned away all of these these attempts at subverting our glorious Ostolska. Right. Did you turn away the wife who was just trying to get in with her family? Hell yeah! Oh, <laughs> she didn't have the papers. I didn't. I never let her in. You thought about the papers and not so much about the please. <laughs> I don't even know why that word's in the title. <laughs> it's, um, well, I think it, it really adds to the, 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 like, when somebody, it's like basically when somebody cocks the barrel, like, paper, please. But, um. Remember that comma. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is I played, um, I can't think of the developer's name right now. Um, mm-hmm. but I played another one of their games, uh, called The Republic of Times. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but after the ending to that game, um, I wasn't so into Ezek, because I think, like, the first time you play through it, you're probably like, oh, yeah, I want to help the rebels, because, you know, I'm in sort of this Cold War, vaguely Eastern European country, you know what I mean? But, like, I don't know, because I was getting the feeling that maybe Ezek's not so great either, I have no, you know what I mean? I have not played the Republic of Times, uh, but as far as I can tell, when playing Papers, Please, if you adhere to... The government. I have not gotten any. It's not been worthwhile. I think I haven't been getting any kind of rewards for doing that. I usually just get thrown in prison in the end. <laughs> I don't know if going with Essex will end up with any better. Well, uh, I can tell you that there's basically kind of rewards for doing both the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, it's it's you have to be you have to be. There's a little tricky to do both, but um, right. There's certain things that there's like little tricks like uh so this guy uh Rocket Baby Games I think or Rocket Baby Let's Plays is that his name um did a let's play of it on something awful so like there's neat ways to kind of learn how to deal with um the guy who kills somebody in Republia and is escaping mm-hmm. um, oh yeah the track star yeah the track star and or the uh the guy who's like runs the brothel right yeah but um because you can you can get him detained even though his papers are bad or okay. Yeah, I figured that out, that you could actually use the note as evidence to get him detained. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, when you get to the point where you will get money if you detain people, did you take advantage of that? I did. Of course. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Their papers were not in order. See, you know what I'm wondering then, too, is I started then not detaining people until uh, Colens the Guard makes the offer. Mm-hmm. Because without that incentive, then I'm like, well, I don't get anything for detaining people, really. And it actually takes a little longer, it seems like. So I just deny them and next, 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 you know. Well, I mean, I detain them anyway. Oh, okay. Isn't that its own reward? Well, no, yeah, it sort of is. Yeah, it does feel pretty good. It does, it does. I mean, they brought forged papers into the booth. Right. They, they get what they have coming to them. You never know. They could be one of those people lobbing a grenade or whatever once you, they're on it, the other you side. You never know. And they give you that flashy red button, how can you not push it? <laughs> I mean, you don't see what happens to the families of those guards who die. No, no one absolutely. thinks about them. Or the one guy in green. I mean, we knew him from back right. in the day. Absolutely. Did uh, he survive in your game? No. I, he survived in mine. I was able to get him through. I, I've heard mixed things, yeah. I, I think it's like you have to be... Yeah, I think you have to kind of know part of it's coming, because it's, it's the motorcycle guy, I think, that actually kills him, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to, like, kind of really be quick on the draw there. 
Well, I just had the key by the list laying there by the lock mm. the whole time in case I needed it. That's smart. I'm thinking of cheating and putting the issue eating cities on like a notebook paper or something like next to my computer. So I don't even have to keep refer to the book. Well, I'm not sure if regulations allow that slow beef. Oh, well, <laughs> regulations don't allow me to cross reference the Mesic cards and, you know, possibly let through the rebels. But, you know, we don't talk about that. Yeah, but you, well, you wouldn't actually do that, though. No, right? no. <laughs> Good comrade. I'm getting a little worried about you. <laughs> no, come on. Glory to Artsotska. Um, glory to Artsotska. Is that it, Artsotska? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Artsotska. Artsotska. How do we know that? I Well, no one pronounces it. it. I just said it like that, and it came out, so I'm going to guess that's how it's pronounced. It sounded it sounded roughly official. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about your Let's Play career. My illustrious uh, career, yes. which I started right after getting out of college. I majored in Let's Play, I, don't you know. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. And my career's been skyrocketing. Nice. Do me a favor, keep recording. Uh, but diabetes' internet just went out. Okay. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's um, let's keep. Let's let me let me finish this question. And we'll get sure. into it while he gets back up. Sure. All right. I have a question. All right. So you're illustrious. Let's make her. Um. So you, you're doing. You did a. Uh, it'll bleed. You did a few on the something on that say. Mm -hmm. Um. But like two of your bigger ones were ill bleed and deadly premonition. Right. Uh, I gold mined deadly premonition actually. Yes, you did. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I really like that let's play, and I was like. I try to keep that kind of rare, but that was the sort of thing where I'm like, yeah, I'd really like to see more things like this, you know, because yeah. it was really like a high effort sort of thing. Um, but then apparently one up contacted you. They did. And they said if, and they, and they, I, I'm just presuming said, could you do, um, was it shadows of the damned for one up.com? Uh, well, basically the way it went was, uh, Bob Mackey who worked for one up at, at the time, he, uh, approached me after the deadly premonition LP was over. Oh, was diabetes back. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, sorry, having southern internet issues. No problem. I was just asking him about the one-up thing, and I kind of made the question sound really long, so... And I had a transition happen. statement prepared for when you started talking about these LPs that he's done, and now the opportunity's lost. Well, you know, maybe we could just edit that together. Yeah. Oh, we That's could do I, that. Yeah. So, um, let's see, one-up. We were talking about, uh, Bob. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're saying one up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. So Bob Mackey came to me and said that he was interested in me doing an LP for one up, uh, because he really liked the Deadly Premonition LP. And I guess one up were trying to think of new things that they could do for their site, some sort of new content. Uh, since of course, I mean, they, they had been bought by IGN. Uh, mm -hmm. They had downsized, so they were not as large as they were. So they were trying to figure out what they could do to keep things going. Um, and they asked if I could do an LP for them. I gave them a few suggestions. Um, and fun fact, one of the suggestions was Harvester. Oh, hey. Uh, what do you know? Let me see if I can sell that shit real quick. <laughs> I just thought it would be funny if they said yes. Um, right. No, but they they uh, wanted Shadows of the Dam, which was another of the suggestions. Uh, so we just went with that, did it once a week. Around halfway through the LP, however, I think we got to the end of the year, and they rebudgeted, and they decided to not go on with it. Um, and I just completed the LP on my own channel. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, that's just basically how it went. They were just trying to come up with new content, just try to figure out something new. Um, and I guess they were trying to combine more social elements with their game coverage. I see. Is there, like, do you feel any different when you actually, like, make a Let's Play, like, on, I guess, I guess I'd, I don't even know if there was money involved or whatever, but, like, on mm -hmm. commission? Yeah, or... I mean, I'm, honestly, I, I guess I could call myself a professional LPer because <laughs> I actually did receive a paycheck for that. Okay. I, I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, go ahead. It had IGN's logo on it and everything. What? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of nuts. Did you deposit it, or did you just frame it then as, like... No, I, I deposited it. Okay. I mean, I, I just kept it around for a few days to laugh at, but then, yeah, I eventually <laughs> deposited it. <laughs> Holy shit, an IGN check. Mm -hmm. If you get fired from IGN, do they, like, tell you, like, look, we, we have to give you a 6 out of 10, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just, they didn't think I brought anything to the table. I see, gotcha. <laughs> so it was 5.5 mediocre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But your your services are no longer needed, but you're still way better than Godhand. Um, <laughs> Maybe I should have suge suggested that for the LP. <laughs> um, you call it. So, uh, so 
I wonder why they didn't go with Harvester, though. I wonder how that would have went, honestly. I mean, I just really wanted to see, like, once a week, a Harvester video appearing on OneUp.com's front page. I just thought that <laughs> I thought that would have been funny. Absolutely. And who knows? It might. Have, I mean, um, actually, I to be to be completely honest, I haven't. I didn't watch your Shadows of the Damned Let's Play mm -hmm. because you had sold out. I mean, no. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I. It was one of those games I was actually kind of interested in playing myself, and then yeah. I just sort of fell off the radar, and I didn't for whatever reason. But um, uh, how did it? How did that go? You think in terms of your your body of work? I mean, I I like the game, uh, so I tried to you know do a good job on it. I don't think I think the LP was all right, not as good as say something like the Deadly Premonition LP. Sure, but I mean, in the case of the Deadly Premonition LP, that game kind of sells itself. I did. Yeah. I mean, while I did had to do a lot of editing work, uh, for, especially for like the movie reviews. Yeah. Really, the game is so interesting on its own. I. I was just to the side of it, really. Yeah. With how this was an LP for hire, so to speak, did you take any kind of a different approach than in your kind of just eh, for fun hobby stuff that you did for SA? Uh, really, the only advice they had was the length of the videos, which mm -hmm. I think, if I remember right, they were saying they were looking for shorter videos, like around 15 minutes in length. Okay. I think that was really the only note they gave to me. Gamers have no attention spans. That's right. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's weird, though, now, because it seems like the standard YouTube uh, Let's Play video length, I mean, granted, it runs the gamut, but mm -hmm. I think this, it seems like the sweet spot, and either of you can tell me I'm bolt full of shit on this, is like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. I've noticed, I mean, it just seems to me that usually if I see a YouTube LP, they're going to go for the 11-minute uh, length. I mean, you, but you know why that would be the case. Right, right. I mean, well, nowadays, though, I, you don't really have to do much to get the the thing off anymore. You know what I mean? Well, I, I don't mean the time limit. I mean, oh. that's the shortest length. I think that's around the shortest length of video that you can have where you can still apply all of the advertising options to it. Oh, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, um... <laughs> It, I don't know. I mean, but it, you know what, too, is just kind of weird. Like, a lot of, I noticed, a lot of them I noticed sometimes will put up, like, 51 minutes or, like, an hour and 40, which kind of just says to me, like, you know, I just put it all up. I didn't even watch it back. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what the hell? It's done. I'm not I just kept that. it on all day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Whatever. It's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, uh, I stepped away to, to cook some dinner while, while this was recording. I hope you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> Long cutscene. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I have I recorded it in the face cam, so there's still content. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think okay. people have stock face cam footage they use? You mean just like if if the video is pretty much the same thing every like day? Like record various reactions. Be like, okay, I'll put this one here. This is my shocked <laughs> yeah. face. Put this over the sequence. <laughs> I do. Frankly. Okay. Well, I have my Slender Man mask for my uh, scare cam LPs, <laughs> so you know. That way, like, I'm just set no matter what. I can just dub the audio over it and pretend. It but, works. Absolutely. See, these little tricks that you learn by yeah. listening to podcasts like these. Absolutely, yeah. You, you should, I, there, that Northern Lion guy has, like, crazy tricks for stealing people's money. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We don't, because we, we are... We love all of our guests. We're washing in their celebrity musk as we speak. <laughs> How evocative of you. Exactly, yeah. So you're still doing the LP thing, or I've noticed you've done some streaming stuff recently. You're starting to deviate more into that? Uh, yeah, I mean, a bunch of the stuff I've been doing has been a lot of uh, streaming videos, just because I like the idea. I mean, most of the stuff I was doing was recording games and then editing and uh, doing post-processing on it. So I kind of like the idea of trying to do live stuff. Of putting in the least amount of effort as possible is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, if I, I just sort of slouch up to the microphone each week and then just sort of sleepwalk through it. <laughs> and actually, it requires a lot more effort, I think, than anything else I've done. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what do you say kinda, that? Um, it, Just you have to do everything on the fly and there's no second take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to, basically the idea is I want to try to make the streamed videos as good as an LP videos, which, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Right. Um, but trying to do all the preparation necessary to get all that ready beforehand actually takes a lot of time and actually doing the, the playthrough while doing it live and monitoring everything and watching the chat is, is probably harder than any uh, other LP I've done. Well, you know, it's funny because I find that um, if I'm practicing a game for an LP, you know, 
like especially like a hard game like Contra Three or Cave Story or Cave Story on Hard or things like that. You know, it's it goes a lot smoother bef- when you're not recording. But then once you are, it's like and you're ta- and you're commenting if you're doing the live, especially mm-hmm. it's like you're trying to balance. It's like you're multitasking in a way. Yeah, you're trying to think about th- a whole lot of different things at once. Yeah, and then live you have the intense pressure of you have to get it right the first time. Mm-hmm. Plus, like you say, the 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 chat, the the screen, you know, the actual broadcasting, the uh, technical back end, things like that. While you're playing, while you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. See, I try to set up my streams as a very cash thing where those expectations don't exist. I, I try that, too. I'm just basically like, this is not going to be any good. <laughs> right. I, I started off doing the casual streams and then just sort of tried to get more into it with uh, with higher production values. I hear you. By the way, when talking about trying to multitask and looking at all, all these things at once, mm-hmm. one word for you. Cocaine. Oh, oh shit. That's, that's the secret. See, the, I was a big fan of methamphetamine because mm. you just stay up for, like, hours and hours. You can just keep fucking streaming. Even when you're not online. Absolutely, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stream of See, I, other than cocaine, I just did a lot of NyQuil. But it didn't have the right effect, I found, honestly. Yeah, that's, I think that's the opposite, actually. Yeah, no, I told, that's totally awful. It's my, <laughs> it's my anti-drug. Um. <laughs> LP is what keeps you off of the stuff. <laughs> Did you um? Did you do a bunch of Ouya games? Is that how you pronounce it? Ouya. Ouya. Yes, the Ouya. Yes, I, I did a, I did a few Ouya videos after I bought the thing, uh, because it is, it is the the hot new movement. I don't know if you knew this. Okay. The hot new movement in video games, Android consoles. Oh, all now, right. Ouya is just the first. I mean, you have a bunch of other com- others coming out, like the one from Amazon. You have Game Stick. Uh, Mad Cats is making one. I mean, oh. it's. Yeah, actually. I do, and this is taking over video games. Ouya was the pioneer, the trailblazer. You better get on this on this boat. It's going to leave you behind. Well, it's interesting. sure about that. You know, I was going to say it sounds kind of like fragmentation would be an issue, but that's never been an issue with any Android product. So. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Th- this that's... is... It's all going to work out great. <laughs> what is the best Ouya game? Um... You mean Ouya exclusive? Because most of the games are not. Right. Most of them. Most of them are also for Android phones, right? Uh, w- or no? Sort of. I mean, no. there are actually Ouya exclusive games. Oh, no, there yeah, are, yeah, yeah. There yeah. are PC games that were ported to the Ouya specifically. Like a little indie hit called Sonic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog Four on the Ouya. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, oh. If if you want to buy Android games from the Amazon store and just play those straight, just not. Ouya games, just like actual, just Android games, you can do that. Okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you have that, but not many Ouya exclusive games, really. I mean, I guess the best one is Towerfall, if you've heard of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't really played that because that's local multiplayer only. Uh, uh-huh. doesn't really have, has sort of a single player training mode, but it's nothing worthwhile. That's supposed to be coming out on the PC, so it's not going to be Ouya exclusive for very long. Do you ever want to come over and play some Towerfall? I mean, we live yeah. right in the same state. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Get uh, I'll get three more Ouya controllers. Oh, please, which, yeah. By the way, the build quality on the controllers, fantastic. I've heard that. That's yes. the one thing that sticks out. It's the part where you press the uh, the main action button, and yeah. uh, it sticks under the frame of the controller. And oh. when you know, the the product is quality. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just be careful using Android stuff around Slow Beef, because he gets very angry and temperamental when you mention Android. I'm I'm an, I am an iOS. De- I'm technically bo- uh, both, but I'm more an iOS developer. So yeah, that that Android gets me dander up, shaking fist. Maybe Apple has to get their ducks in a row and make a micro console of their own. Uh, well, you know they did. I ever tell it's you called that the iPad, isn't it? Actually, no. Um, in we went to the Apple conference in 2012, and I think they were like really subtly pushing that. Oh really? Because they had a lot of presentations that were like. Hey, look, your iPad can stream to a second screen, like a television. Mm. Here's a racing game we made. Interesting, isn't it? Here And then, like, a lot... W- and I'm like, are they, like, trying to get me to make the iPad into a console? Because, eh, I'm so lazy, you know? <laughs> so I don't think it's I don't think it's a real deal play, but I think they are trying to, like, push Apple TV and things like that, so they're kind you know, of... Oh, like, yeah, like, built into Apple TV. You yeah. Mean, okay, yeah. Yeah. I have an Apple TV, actually. I got it as a gift. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I do like it, although if you have a, if you have a game console, it, I mean, it does kind of, it's like Hulu, Netflix, you know, all that shit. It just sure. looks iTunes, so. All of the features that the Ouya made standard. Exactly, right, exactly. 
But um, getting back to the yeah, yeah I um, uh, oh, don't forget they they have that one uh, the one hit game that they tweeted like come get some with um that was it that oh, dragon. The, the cancer game? Yeah, that dragon <laughs> cancer. Did you hear about yeah, that, Beatus? Yeah, I no? did. No? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was an odd thing that, um, there's, a uh, an indie game that got some play about someone making sort of a personal experience on the subject of cancer. You know, it's not like a big bombastic video game. It's just sort of like a personal art game. And then it got, it got made exclusive to Ouya. And, uh, Ouya on their Twitter, posted the news for that and then like ended the sentence by saying get some and- <laughs> it was like the Ouya exclusive that dragon cancer get some and like it was deleted kind of soon after but it's like wow why? <laughs> that, like- you know, it turns out this message tested poorly amongst people who don't have cancer <laughs> <laughs> what has to be the matter with you I'm out you know <laughs> fuck yeah that dragon cancer <laughs> They're just really excited to get an exclusive game. I know. I, I mean, so. that's, I mean, that's crazy excited. I think I lost all reason. We got a Ouya exclusive. Jesus. Did you uh, happen to see the Ouya animated commercial? No. Oh, it was so good that Ouya took it down within hours. Oh. Uh, someone else, I believe someone else captured it and put it up on YouTube. I highly suggest watching that. Oh, man. Um, it is... Yeah, in the 90s, did you watch Liquid Television on MTV? Did I? It seemed like something that would appear on that. <laughs> oh, <ooh>, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know you know what the sad thing is, too? It's almost like... It's something you, you might almost want to get behind in a way. Not uh, just... I mean, just like... Look, we're going up against the consoles. It's ninety nine dollars. All games are gonna have a demo mode, and it's like okay. And then it's like, and uh, well, here's the launch. It didn't really go so well. like oh, all right. And then it's just like the little console that won't quit, but probably should at this point. Yeah, um, I mean, anything that's on the Ouya just runs better on anything else. Yeah. It's... Um, but I mean, if you really have a hankering for the Amazing Frog, well, Ouya's yeah. got you covered. That is good to that is good to know. Actually, does the Ouya still have that lag with any game you play on it? Um, it, well, the way you fix that is by putting the Ouya on its side, so the top of it <laughs> faces you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Then you blow wow. one up for a little while. Uh, that might help. I haven't tried that, but I will have to think about that. But yeah, that that's how my Ouya is positioned right now. Hold on, I didn't I I didn't know anything about this. Put your Ouya in bed rest before trying to play. <laughs> How does that like affect? How does that affect anything? <laughs> like what? that's like some genie shit. <laughs> if you shake the Ouya vigorously before use, yes, you have to deliver the the sacred chant while holding the Ouya before you turn it on. Yes. Rub the Ouya and you can wish for three bad games. Does it, like, overheat or something in the wrong position, or...? I don't think so, though, honestly, when I first started using the Ouya and I had to download a big update, it did get frighteningly hot. Wow. Um, but that's the only... Frighteningly, like, I touched it and I was thinking, oh, um, something's <laughs> melting inside. <laughs> but, uh... I'd better turn it on its side. That was the only time that... <laughs> well, the vents are on the bottom. I mean, I don't know why... But oh, that might that might be mm. one reason why that helps. <laughs> what? Wait. So if you if you put it on the top the way you think you're supposed to, you're covering the fucking vents. Yeah, the the only vents on the system are on the bottom of the box, and the the bottom goes flush against the surface you're pressing it on. You're putting it on. So yeah, if you want to think about that, so get some ice trays. Wow. It's, but that's amazing to me that anybody who could have designed that didn't just see that flaw. Supposedly, they got some, I forget the name, they got some celebrity, uh, designer to make the Ouya, and I guess they went totally, the person went totally, uh, formal Celebrity function. designer? Yeah, like someone who was well known. I can't remember the name or what they were known for, but like it was a, some, some kind of designer, more or less, like a graphic. Tim Gunn? Tim Gunn. <laughs> and as far, what I heard was that they, one aspect of it was that they were unable to change any aspect of the design. Um, so whatever this person made for them, that's what they stuck with, even though it, it's, it has problems. Yeah. Um, but they did announce the Ouya 2.0. Oh, um, 
Oh god, I can't I can't pronounce this name unfortunately, but it was like Eve's uh Behar. Yeah, that's the name. Yeah. Um pr- founder, principal designer, refuse project, award winning industrial design and brand firm. I'm guessing he didn't do some computers before this, or maybe he did I don't know. But anyway. For whatever reason they made it like it was a big deal that he was working on it during the Kickstarter. Right, I say. Gotcha. That's that's incredible. <laughs> That's so awesome. I never knew that. It's like every time you learn something about Ouya, it's like Bitcoin. <laughs> like every time you learn a new aspect of it, it's like, wow, that got worse. And generally, that's what it's made out of. <laughs> that's the in-game currency for all Ouya games. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Bitcoin. <laughs> did, did you hear, by the way, um, Proteus told me about this recently, um, about the uh, Bitcoin Save My Life Reddit thread? What? Hmm. Oh, there's, yeah, I, I think maybe this is something you might want to look up on your own, because I don't want to spoil it for you, per se, but this guy basically met a girl who lived in Brazil, decides to go visit her, and finds out her family's very poor, and he has to, like, sleep in the same bed, and everybody walks around naked, and it, it becomes these, like, really, it starts out, like, it's like one of those things you're reading it, and it gets worse and worse and worse as you read it, and you're like, is this a joke or something? And then the punchline comes in and is like, and then I remembered Bitcoins. And Bitcoins, like, save the day. And it's, like, <laughs> such a horrific story that you're, like... you're missing this... some plot in between those two things. Oh, no, you are. I'm purposely <laughs> leaving out that plot. Yeah. You know, because it's it's uh, it's an awful sexual misadventure. And it totally shouldn't be, and it's awful. And it's, like, one of those, like, why would you tell someone about this kind of stories? And then... I remember just reading it in horror at my desk and then bursting out laughing at, and then I remembered Bitcoins. And then that was the, yeah. his way out. You see, Bitcoin beneficial for people the world over. Uh, there you go. Down with fiat currency. No, did you hear though? Like, apparently it doesn't scale is the new problem with Bitcoin. How do you mean? So as the transactions go on, the blockchain you have to download to prove it gets bigger and bigger. So I think now it's, it's up to something like 20 gigs. Okay. So if you want to do a Bitcoin transaction, you have to download a 20 gig file. Okay. Oh, darn. That was the only thing stopping me <laughs> from doing that. It's awesome. I know. You could have been a Bitcoin and, millionaire. Uh, and that's too much store. That's too much for my Ouya to store. <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> I wanted to use my Ouya to mine some Bitcoin. Well, that's, that's what Ouya 2.0 is for, I think. Uh, of right? course. Yeah. It makes you money. By the, and I know there's going to be some libertarians out there who are like, it's not 20 gig, it's only like 4 or some shit like that, so I'm sorry, but whatever, at any rate. Um, but uh, I can't I can't wait for the OUYA 2.0, and I'm going to get that and put it right on top of my uh, PS4, on top of my Xbox One. And, and form Voltron. And form Voltron. Don't forget, on its side. On its side, yes. right. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'm so, I'm, I'm, th- this podcast has already just bought itself for me. <laughs> The price of admission has been paid, even though that was zero. But what... <laughs> That's awesome. You did another game, which is very near and dear to my heart on your stream, and I was so fucking skeptical of this. Okay. This is where I nail you to the fucking wall, okay? Oh, no. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. This is a gotcha interview. This is. Nine persons, nine hours, nine doors. Uh, yeah, I think that's the order. I think it is. I'm not sure, honestly. Um, uh, but nine, nine, nine. Uh, yes, yes it is. I really like that game. And it, and you streamed it live. I have to say, that's a pretty ballsy move, because <laughs> w- any video format with for a game which is, like, maybe 16 hours of fucking advancing text, <laughs> um, <laughs> and maybe, like, two hours of actual gameplay, Yeah. how do you pull that off? Well, I mean, that was actually the first stream that I did, mm. like, in this the string of weekly streams that I was, that I've been doing. Right. Uh, and I didn't really know what I was doing. Like basically the, the first idea was I heard about this 999. I kind of mm. want to play it. Right. I don't like visual novels though. And so maybe I'll stream this and get a bunch of people in here who like visual novels so we can talk about it as I'm doing it. And maybe it'll, maybe I'll like it that way. I ended up liking the format and liking 999 quite a lot though at the beginning it uh was kind of it was kind of trying my patience you with uh yeah yeah no 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 i agree i you know what the thing with it is um i don't i don't really consider it a visual novel and i mm-hmm. know i find that the people who don't like visual novels say like me like say it isn't one and people who do like it say it is and try to bring it but it's i would call it like an adventure game with extremely long cutscenes right 
But um, I do feel like there actually is real deal gameplay to it. It's like an adventure game or really es- those escape the room kind of flash games, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. There definitely is uh, gameplay in the puzzle rooms. Yeah. Um, but didn't they take those out of the, the iPad version? Uh, The puzzle rooms? Yeah, I heard that. Oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't even know. I didn't know, uh, even know about the iOS version. Yeah, there is an iOS version. My understanding is that uh, Chunsoft felt that they wanted everyone to be able to enjoy it, so they took out the puzzle rooms, and it's just pure text. Uh, so I don't know how well that works, but the art is in HD. And that version didn't get ported to the Ouya. Uh, not <laughs> yet, though. Oh. The Ouya does have a fantastic touchpad on the controller, so it could possibly come. Come okay. to when I say fantastic, I mean terrible. Right, of course, yes. Um, uh, so 999, um, like I said at the beginning, it was kind of trying my patience with a lot of repeated text, a lot of tutorials, and that opening cutscene where everyone talks to each other for hours before we do anything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was I, at that point, I was kind of, uh, I don't know about this. Uh, then once we got into it, I ended up liking it a lot. It takes a bit. Yeah. I think, yeah, and uh, now, just to, you know, so I've finished 999, and I read the the screenshot Let's Play by Dragon Atrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you've finished it, you did a video Let's Play of it, um, or a uh, stream of it, rather. Yeah. Uh, D- Beatus, though, you have not played 999? I have not, nor its sequel, Valor. Nor VLR. Um, we won't, we won't spoil VLR. I don't, I don't think, because you're still playing it, right? Yeah, I'm just at the beginning. Okay, so we obviously we won't do, the, you're gonna like that a lot, by the way. Um, I didn't, I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, I did not like VLR as much as 999 at first. Okay. And then it, it like, I felt surpassed the first game easily. Oh, great. I, and I, I really liked 999 a lot. There's, there's certain things about VLR I still don't like, where I'm like, ah, oh, that's kinda dumb, or whatever, but like, for the most part, I'm like, that's excellent, and that's, and plus, I love Prisoner's Dilemma, so that. Can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, so after completing the game, how did you feel about the decision to add voice acting? In, um, VLR. Oh. I, I don't, I didn't really like it, and I found I skipped by it anyway. Yeah. There were certain voices that I just couldn't buy into. I didn't like Kay's voice. I didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't like Dio's voice. I don't know. I mean, none of the voice actors are, partic- are particularly bad, per se. But right. Do you ever, like, see, hear a voice actor versus a character, and it, like, doesn't match what you were thinking and stuff? Sure. Like, there's um there's an LP going on in this game, the Blackwell series. Right. And uh, they're voice acted games, but they're screenshot Let's Plays. So the one character, I had, like, an idea of his voice. His name's Joey. And then when you actually hear his voice, I'm like, that doesn't sound... He's supposed to be, like, a 40s detective, like, ghost, kind of. And I wasn't imagining him to be, like, you know, the Cagney thing I usually do. Like, that mm-hmm. rare she kind of deal. But, um, I don't know. I had it in his head that he was a little tougher, you know, or a little... Not gritty, but you know what I mean? Like, he had a little bit of, like, a rough edge to him. But then you hear his voice, and he just sounds like, yeah, you know, I'm a guy. It's like, oh, all right, <laughs> that's bad. No, not, I don't know. It, just, it might be something that if you're playing the game, you're more used to it. At any rate, um, I didn't like it at first, but it grew on it. Not that it grew on me, but like I just found myself skipping it, and I liked the story and everything well enough. I didn't like the characters at first in BLR as much as 999. Yeah. Like, some of the, it, it felt like they were going kind of wild out there. So what I liked about 999 is... It's not, you know, there's nine people, they're on a ship, they're kind of in these this sort of like death trap a la cube or saw or something, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're relatively, um, they're grounded enough in reality where you could, like, care about the, or you know what I mean? Like, right, but, they're still anime characters, but they're, they're basically more realistic than, they're on the realistic side that you would get from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the the most out there one is this one woman's, like, a belly dancer, so she's wearing a weird outfit, yeah. and then it turns out she's a computer programmer, and you're like, huh, <laughs> uh, really? Okay, sure, but, I mean, that said, Virtue's Last Reward, I mean, you have a guy in armor, you mm-hmm. have a little kid, um, right. the one woman is literally not wearing a shirt, I yeah. mean, it's like, and, and then Clover is dressed up like a cave woman, kinda, and it's like, what the fuck is, you know, I don't know, I had a lot of problems with that. And Zero was a rabbit. Zero is a... Yeah, well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> you know what the problem, too, is I had I had, I had had started playing that game after Danganronpa, the thread, had gone. Here we go again. I know. And, and the, the Zero the Third from that game seemed a lot like Mono Bear from Danganronpa, and I'm like, eh, I don't mm. know. You know what I mean? So, don't... Yeah. Well, I'm assuming that most things in life remind you of Danganronpa Unfortunately, Yes, yes, unfortunately. Anyway, but... um. 
Yeah. That having been said, I mean, have you played your first Ambidex game in VLR? Or? No. Uh, the last stream I did, actually, last night, we stopped right before going back into the Ambidex doors after getting the key cards from the first puzzle room. You're with Phi right now? Yes, I am. Uh, who are you going up against? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gone into the um, into the doors yet. That's oh. where we stopped. Oh. Uh, right. So that's basically where I am. Who did you do the room with? Went with Alice. Okay. And so, we did the crew quarters. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, that was actually what I did the first time I played, too. Hmm. Everybody in the in the thread seems to like Luna for whatever reason, but... Um, okay. I mean, I I like her I liked her better as the story went on. A lot of people like her at the beginning because she's very nice. I didn't really care about her at first, but she is, she's a better... I felt she became a much better character, you know? Right. I think the characters do kind of start off being mostly one-dimensional. At least yeah. Right, yeah, right now. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Would oh, you start turning on the 3D? Uh, <laughs> I I honestly never turn on the 3D for any games on that thing. I always have it turned off all the way. I I do it every so often just to see what they do with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And Virtual Last Reward is kind of ridiculous in a way because there's very little to it, and you know what I mean, like just like boobs in your face or something. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think they did that for Dead or Alive Dimensions. But, uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've yet to play that. I mean, it just uh, it's not really a thing with the 3DS. It's me, like just in terms of video games and movies. I never like 3D. The only 3D I've ever used that I've actually liked was the Oculus Rift. Uh, nothing else really. I always thought it was kind of a waste. How is the Oculus Rift? Oculus Rift is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing if you turn it on its side. Yes, you have to do that first and only look at it through one eye. But they'll, oh. they'll fix the bugs. <laughs> That's Oculus Rift 2.0. I see. I, I like to just push my face up against the TV <laughs> when I'm playing the game, like have my cheeks smeared on it. <laughs> I find it gives me the good experience. There are scare cam videos out there of people using that. <laughs> I'm sure there are. Is the fuck well, up. yeah, I mean, you have half the screen of the person's face as they're, you know, looking up on all around and saying, wow, this is amazing. And then the screen... The game you're actually seeing is just sort of a small curved screen, which, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about, <laughs> I was thinking about doing an Oculus Rift video, but there's really no way to get across what, uh, using that thing's like in a video. I've, um, I mean, you could go with a body cam, you know, cause I've seen, I've heard of, I mean, there's, there's videos of people using the Oculus Rift and like fall, Oculus Rift and like falling over and shit yeah. like that. <laughs> but I mean, even, even still, it, it really, you can't get the idea of what it's like without actually using it yourself. I understand. Um, it, it, it does, it's hard to s- describe, but it doesn't translate to a screen, uh, that you're looking at in front of you. Uh, it does it, then, it, but it, it fool, does it like fool you, I guess, into thinking you're actually sort of in it or? Yeah, there is definitely is a part of the brain that is being fooled. Right. Um, I mean, different games, the 3D effect, the immersive effect has been, have been different, but there are some games in which I, you know, go up to an object and yeah, that looks like I could reach out and touch that. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think the, the big thing for anyone who first uses it is when you first put it on and you're looking in front of you because, you know, that's usually where the video game is. It's in front of you, uh-huh. but then you turn around and then there's more video game behind you. <laughs> and that's always the case. You can't, you can't, you can't stay watching the video game, all of it, all the time, because it's always all around you, and something may be coming up from behind you. You don't know. I remember uh, when I was younger, they had this uh, virtual reality thing you'd see in like certain arcades or movie theaters, where you were like kind of standing in a ring and wearing a helmet. Was that Dactyl Nightmare? Might have been. You, yeah, I think so. Where you were holding the gun, and there was like pterodactyls, but you tried to shoot the, like another <laughs> opponent with the gun. Right. And, uh, I mean, it had the 3D where you looked around kind of effect, but the problem is there was a ton of lag. Oh, sure. So it was like this sort of sickening effect, you know? <laughs> it was just, it didn't work at all. So I, I was kind of interested in the, the Oculus Rift, because I, I like 3D in a way. Like, I think it does fool me in terms of like, oh, I get the depth and it looks like it's whatever. But then, like, I my head starts to hurt like 10 minutes in, you know? Or not that it starts to hurt, but like my eyes feel like screwy. Sure. It's uncomfortable. I don't know. I mean, I definitely had that when I first started using the Oculus Rift, that uh, I couldn't use it for very long before I start feeling nauseous. Okay. Uh, as you start using it, uh, it gets better, and um, it's just something that I found, which I thought was kind of funny. When I originally got the Rift, I thought that the way I would use it would be I would just be sitting at a computer with it on, and I would be using, you know, keyboard and mouse look just like as you normally would with a game. Yeah. But I found that really the best way to do it is to get out of the chair, stand up, and then just turn your body entirely to look around. 
and hold a game pad instead of using the keyboard and mouse so you can use that with uh, with you. And that's just a much better experience I found to use the Oculus Rift. It must, must look incredibly goofy if someone came in and was seeing me doing this. But uh, it's a pretty amazing experience to to actually do it that way. What do I have to do to get an Oculus Rift in my hands today? Today, um, probably unmentionable things, because uh, when I ordered mine, it took like three months. Can I come to your house and play the Oculus Rift right now? Uh, well, do you remember those unmentionable things I, me- I was talking about? Please Skype me with a list of whatever these things are. I'm going to censor this part of the podcast. This is a family <laughs> podcast, okay? So, <laughs> Is it? Okay, all right. Well, anyway. Families come together to listen to this, Slobby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fucking this stripper with a new, yeah. No, right, anyway. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what part of the agenda that was. Uh, okay. Let's see. We got, all right. You're doing, did you finish your mode LP, by the way? No, I stopped in the middle. Um, I mean, just because there's one thing that I need to do that I keep procrastinating. And the thing it is, the way it is with me is if I have something I want to do, if I want to do it, I'll do it. If I don't, I'll just put it off. And this, this I've just put off for months. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's not a big deal. It's just like a little edited montage I have to put together of something that happened in the stream. And that's sort of been delaying the whole thing for months. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think a lot of people were assuming that the reason I stopped the mode LP was because the maker of the game went all truther in the thread. Um, if you saw that, I did. Uh, I didn't. Or if oh. I, there's a lot of fucked up shit in LP. I might, it might have. Yeah. Just somebody yeah. Somebody typing. Forgot. Where is the birth certificate, Obama? He, he was more t- talking about 9/11. Oh, truth. Yeah, the no, birther you're thinking of. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the uh, that was kind of that kind of stopped a lot of momentum in that thread. Well, that like, it oh, it. well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or did it set up a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I do intend to get back to mode at some point because there still is a, a lot more to do with that. But uh, I don't know. I just I just ended up kept putting it off for one reason or another. Do you know, by the way, uh, just a weird side thing. I actually met a birther this weekend. Hmm. It turned out to be somebody uh, in my family. Your wife. Did you demand to see the birth certificate to make sure they were in your family? I was it was I was just sort of stunned. You know, because mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, you know what? You ask me for my birth certificate. I just go home and get it for you. And I, I, at that point, I'm like, wait a minute. You would just go home right fucking now and get your birth certificate if I asked you for it. He was like, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, you are so fucking foolish. And, and like, I didn't uh, want to go that much farther. I have mine framed. It's something to be proud of. <laughs> You should have one up them. You should have scanned your birth certificate, keep it on your phone and say, well, I've got mine right here. What now? I did. I went into the whole Hawaii long form birth certificate thing, but like, regardless of that, I was like, uh, it was one of those things where I'm like, this is why I avoid political conversations with people because I get so. And then did you close it by saying, "So can you back off?" <laughs> and then slap them in the face. <laughs> oh my god! But um, wow, truther and in, in the I'm I'm I, I feel like it's one of those things that I think back on and I'm like I that sounds so familiar but so much wacky shit happens in the let's play sub forum yeah yeah ever since 911 yeah yeah and i mean dangarampa is a full time job in itself <laughs> yeah pretty much and uh, uh but did you see what they're doing with gps recently what's that uh you know general bullshit gps yeah have you gone there in the past couple of days? No, I know I noticed it was renamed, but I uh, don't know don't know why that was. Uh basically all rules are gone. Oh, okay. I mean not all like there's don't post uh non work safe images. I think that's like pretty much it. Hmm. Yeah, so it's it's kind of no man's land right now. It's interesting. But it's it's funny in some threats. It's interesting. Yeah. I think it's still getting his feet, but um Daganramp has come up twice. So <laughs> You'll never be able to get away from it. I can't. So there it. truly are no rules. That's right. Be ten years from now, someone will send you a, a black and white teddy bear in the mail. There you go. Absolutely. Never forget, slow beef. I, I can't <laughs> now. <laughs> no, but you know what? Honestly, what's going to happen? I know my fucking luck is. Part three is going to be announced just as part two let's play is going to end. Yeah, let's continue it. I yeah, know, and then like. <laughs> Or even that one guy will be like, just to give me some hope, like, well, I'm not going to let's play it or run run it. And then someone else will be like, but I can. Oh, oh yeah. If he did not LP it, there would be like 20 people all fighting for it. Oh, yeah. It's just not save for those three months. <laughs> no. <laughs> While you can. No, the big thing is when we're about to reveal the ending of Danganronpa 2 and I just guess the thread. <laughs> 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 oh. 
You're not going to... All you listening aren't going to laugh when that actually happens. If you're lucky, maybe Ron Ron will come out as a big truther. <laughs> you know, I, Dank and Romp is fun, but have you ever thought about what really happened with the World Trade Center? <laughs> <laughs> the next update is just a bunch of pictures of the towers and some diagrams and red circles around... <laughs> I have this rarely seen image here of the morning of 9-11. Notice one tower painted black, the other white. He just translates it to the characters are all talking about it, and that's the case you have to solve. <laughs> well, obviously the plane hit it. You've got that wrong! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I gotta convince him to do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> all right. You know what though? I'm gonna be a total hypocrite, and I want to talk to you about some anime shit because I want to sell. I want to sell. I want to sell diabetes on some anime shit. Great, let's talk about animes. All right, Berserk. Okay. You done a let's play of sort of the Berserk for the Dreamcast? Mm -hmm, that's right. Or did you do the PS2 one? No, it was the Dreamcast one. I not. I haven't actually played the PS2 one. Diabetes. Would you have you ever heard of Berserk? Uh, no. I've heard of the status ailment from Final Fantasy games. It's a. It's a well. It's a manga. That's been going on for like 10, 20 years or some shit. Okay. Um, and I, I watched, I watched the, the cartoon of it, uh, back in the day. And it sucked because it was actually pretty good and interesting. Excuse me, and did it, you say cartoon? Yes, I did. Is that, is that <laughs> vernacular correct? Sloby, if you're losing so much credibility right now. I know. Um, no, uh, did you actually, did you ever watch the anime or the, read the comics? I, I watched the old anime. I read a few of a few volumes of the manga, uh -huh. and uh, I, I kind of stopped because I was figuring if I was going to continue, I should probably wait until it's done. Um, but who knows if I'll be alive at that time? Yeah, it's actually so. Uh, how do you sell this story to somebody like Diabetes who's never heard of it? Um, I mean, it's a tale of swords, of sorcery. It's a tale of revenge. Mm -hmm. A tale of a man trying to find his place in the world from a a poor, violent upbringing, trying to uh, trying to self actualize. So it's every JRPG. It's a it's but a lot more violent. There's mm -hmm. a, there's a, uh, an undercurrent of humanistic uh, free will versus nihilistic uh, predetermination. Mm -hmm. It's basically a fucked up story about like a guy who's going off to fight a fight a battle he cannot possibly win. So it's every JRPG. Yeah, actually it is. Uh, you mention it. But Berserk really sells you on, yeah, he's he's not winning this one. I don't know. I, or at least that's what I, the interpretation I got out of it. But, right, uh, but he is the only one who could possibly win it. Right, but I, yeah. It's a, it's a really fucked up story, um, and what's, uh, what sucks about it is the anime, they skip, they skip a major character from the comics, and... That major character has to like save the guy from like a um, a cliffhanger kind of situation, let's say. But then they never introduce him in the anime, so it just ends on the cliffhanger, and that's that. I mean, you talk you talking about a nihilistic ending. I guess that's it. Yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, because I was watching it. Well, the problem is then in the earlier episodes they show shit from ahead of the event, the eclipse. Uh, yeah, that's right. So then, like, so they're like, okay, it does go on. But then you're like, I remember watching the last episode, and I'm like, they got like five minutes left. How can they wrap this whole thing up? <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, what? They don't? Like, fuck you, <laughs> then, assholes. This is why I don't like anime. They made a new anime, didn't they? I kind of like that. Um, did they? I th yeah, I, I wasn't paying attention to it really, but I saw, thought I remembered seeing screenshots from a new Berserk anime. If you can get over the fact that the sword really is just the guy's dick, I mean, it's pretty good, <laughs> you know. Sold. No, it's like it's like crazy phallic. It's like it's like basically he's basically telling the world I keep this for balance. No, um, he like uh uh, it, it's like makes the Final Fantasy VII shit look like you know normal more or less. But um, if you can get past that, it's actually like a neat story, and it doesn't like it doesn't go into the usual tropes that make you go, "Okay, this whole thing is stupid." You know, there are some tropes, but uh, I think overall, it it kind of surpasses that. Yeah, I mean, uh, keep in mind though, like I again, I I never read the comics, so like the, I know the one character from the Dreamcast, what like isn't in what I saw, like the little fairy elf dude or whatever. Yeah, Puck. Puck, yeah. So I had no idea about Puck. He's actually a major character in the story, who, yet, like you said, was not in the anime. Right. Um, 
which I guess for the part, I mean, the part of the anime, the part of the story they show in the anime, which is the flashback. Yeah. Like, that's fine because he's not in that part. Uh, right, right, right. But yeah, in the present day, he is all over the place. Yeah. Well, Skull Knight's never in it, so he can't get out of the eclipse, which right. is the whole problem with the anime. But anyway. So are you going to watch this, Diabetes? Oh, I already ordered all of them. Okay, good. Yeah. Nice. Make sure you brush up on your Japanese so you can read the manga in the language it's intended to uh, be. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I am in Alabama. <laughs> It all, it, it all, it's really not a bad story at all. It just, uh, it just never ends, so you can't really read it. It's not a bad story, but you can't possibly finish it. Are you trying to unsell me on it now? In any format. No, I'm unselling myself on it now. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell am I doing selling this? <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever. Let's go back to Dang it. No, um. <laughs> So there's that, Golgo 13. What else have we, what else could we talk about? Have we talked about Deadly Premonition at all? We haven't, really. Oh, yeah, that's right. How'd you stumble upon that gem? Uh, well, I think the first time I saw it was when it was first coming out, there was a video posted on, I think, Destructoid, that was a, a video of the first breakfast conversation in the game. And I thought, well, I, I have to have this. <laughs> uh, so I bought an Xbox 360 just for that. I didn't have one before. Um, just because for me, I always kind of know if a game is for me. And I knew that that game was for me just seeing the cutscene. Um, so, you know, I played through the game. I really enjoyed it and really wanted to do a, like the most I could do for an LP for that. Uh, like I said, the game is very unique. So as far as how good an LP it could be, it's mostly based on how interesting the game is in itself. Uh, I gotta tell you, I really liked the. I only I only watched your last play of it. Mm -hmm. um, I really it kind of lost me at the ending. Oh yeah, I, that seems to be uh, that seems to be a common thing. Some people will like the twist, and other people will feel that it kind of goes off the rails and wasn't the story they thought it was going to be. I I didn't mind the. We can spoil it, right? I mean, yeah. This podcast. Yeah, you just make sure you put a like some spoiler warning graphic. Oh yeah, um, in the right. YouTube video, so yeah, everyone can see it in their coffee before they watch this. Well, this is this is probably going to be the last subject we talk about on this podcast. So if you if you do want to play the PC version and you haven't, I think now is the time to tune out. Mm -hmm. Um, and anyway, uh, by the way, I guess before we go into, did they fix the thing where one of the early uh, trading cards spoils? Like the oh oh no, the trading cards are all the same. Oh, well, and actually, on the PC version, there are some spoilers in the achievements. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> they, I mean, did they not have a lot of confidence in the story? Or? Uh, apparently, I mean, I guess, I think Swery was asked about the trading card thing at one point, and he had no problem with there being spoilers in them. So, okay, <laughs> sure, whatever. I, um, I think the issue I have, I don't, I don't mind the Yak, the, the Yak, the York Zack thing, really. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's fine, you know, and I, I'm completely fine with it, actually. I think that's a pretty cool twist. Um, I think more the, there's a weird tone, um, contradiction maybe, or a conflict, or something off about, uh, Forrest being, is it Forrest? I'm Oh, yeah, Forrest honest. Kaysen. Yeah. Forrest being sort of the main villain, um, uh, this whole sequence of events where he's sort of cartoony and silly, but the events that are happening are very serious and dark. Right. To the point where I'm like, I, this is, just not working for me anymore. Okay. Uh, th before, I know there was a disconnect in sort of the way York acts and how eccentric he is and things like that, and the murders being kind of gruesome and things like that, but I don't know. I just felt like at the end, adding the combination of Forrest in, who's sort of eccentric and maybe even a little cartoony himself, especially in the final boss fights with him, you know? Right. I, it didn't sit well with me, you know? Mm. I guess I'm supposed Yeah. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh... I guess – I'm just trying to think about that. that. That plot twist was something that I really liked when I came to it. I think because kind of the impression I got was when you find out what York really is, he's sort of a shield which protects Zack and makes everything um, tolerable for him, the outside world. I see. That kind of gives the impression that even though there's all this grisly, disgusting stuff happening all around, York is always completely cool, collected, and is able to, you know, zing off one-liners and talk about old movies yeah. because that's what he's there for. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, that sort of facade gets stripped away, and then everything is just real bad. Okay. That's interesting. I like that. I, I like that take. Um, did they ever explain, like, what exactly is going on with the combat sequences? 
Uh, how so? What the? What are they? Um, <laughs> they okay. So Swery released a graphic at one point, which showed sort of a map of the spiritual world. Like you have the physical world, Earth, and then around it is the red forest and the green forest, which represent malice and uh, and goodness, I guess. Okay. And sort of neutral territory in between. So basically, what happened in Greenvale is Forrest, in this experiment in conjunction with the U.S. military, uh, spread this purple gas across the town that were made out of his supernatural red seeds, and – this gas is still in the ground. Now, it rains a lot in Greenvale, so when it rains, the gas gets released out of the ground. And when people breathe this gas, they become closer to the spiritual world. The the zombies that you see are dead people, people who died in the, in the massacre that happened in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they, they died because of the gas. They're sort of trapped there in that, that limbo. So when you breathe the gas, you are sort of passing into that i gotcha so i guess that that sort of like when they're saying don't want to die kind of thing is maybe their sort of spirits from the massacre that happened back then kind of still roaming around type of deal right right they're just normal townspeople that got you know driven mad insane by the gas and then all just killed each other see like that's well that's the interesting thing about it is because it was i thought it was an extremely creepy addition to the game but it seemed I, I I thought the shadows rather were were pretty creepy, but like yeah. uh, I I really felt like which I think probably has some truth to it that the combat was a bit tacked on where you say like oh, yeah. this, without it this isn't right. much of a game so or much of a game in the sense that we think will sell you yeah. know yeah so it was sort of added on so you know that's why it's such a good game to let's play that's what people tell me that uh, people say thank you for LPing this game because I didn't want to play it <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's a, it's a shame I'm. What else does Swery do? I'm kind of blanking. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, what he's working on right now is a game called D4, which is going to be exclusive to the Xbox One. Okay. And he'll probably make me get an Xbox One just for that, (laughs) because honestly, I don't really have any interest in the new systems, but I kind of want to play that. Um, before that, he worked on Spy Fiction, which I did an LP of. Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He worked on Extermination. I have not played that one. I think that was PS2. I had that game. Yeah. I never played it. Like, it's one of those games that I put in my, uh, my little rack of games, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Is it right here, actually? It's not right here, but it's around here somewhere. I don't know that what, it, what that would have mattered to the podcast were it there, but, you know. You're just going to play it right now. Absolutely, yeah. We'll, we'll stream it together. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, um... Swery's an interesting guy. He, his, he, he seems to retweet things that you actually tweet to him and things like that. Yeah, he's very social. He's very active on Twitter. He'll, like, follow everyone who follows him? Yeah, he actually he literally does that. Yeah, I remember when I, when he, I think he followed, was it either me? I, or, yeah, like, Slow Beef or, I forget, or something. And I was like, holy shit! And then I'm like, oh, he follows everybody. <laughs> it's something like that. I, <laughs> he probably unfollowed me by now. But, <laughs> like, this guy doesn't talk about anything important. But, um... Well, uh, it's been about an hour, mm-hmm. so I guess uh, we're coming right to the end of our podcast. Is there anything you wanted to plug, or uh... Uh, not really? I mean, you know, I'm just doing what I've con- continued to do. Uh, okay, you know, I just came here to chat. Awesome. Well, uh, we hope well, you're you had... welcome back anytime. Yeah, we hope you had a good time, and we, I did. We, we certainly did. So great, great. Awesome. You're no, you're no Northern Lion, but I'd put oh, well, you above well, Total Biscuit. No, I'm kidding. Well, who is, though? I mean, I'm, I'm at least 200 Binding of Isaac videos away from being able to reach <laughs> that lofty plateau. Well, who, who, I'm at least 400 away, so <laughs> I figure if I play enough papers, please, it'll happen. But, um, hmm. ladies and gentlemen, he is Super Great Friend. You can go see his website on supergreatfriend.com, and his YouTube channel is, of course, Super Great Friend. It's Super Great Friend. On Twitter, he has no date. So, thanks a lot. And uh, I guess we'll see you folks later. Boom. Oh, <laughs> okay. You, you didn't say anything, so I was like... Oh, all right. I, I don't know. I thought you were doing the outro. Either of you. I, mean, so I was like, wait, did I just... You kind of covered it. Oh, okay. I'm Great. still recording, so we can include this. <laughs> sure. I mean, why the hell not? I don't care. No. Um, awesome. <laughs>